Hi everyone, a big welcome or welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has joined me over on Instagram. I recently got Instagram, it was way overdue. I'm really enjoying being on there and posting pretty book pictures and keeping you all a bit more updated with my reading in real time. It's also really nice to see what other people are reading and just be a bit more communicative. So thank you if you have followed me over there. If you would like to follow me over there, the link will be down below. But no pressure, obviously. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about my autumnal slash spooky season TBR. You may know that I am a massive seasonal reader, especially when it comes to autumn and winter. As soon as September hits, I get very, very happy and compiling a seasonal TBR brings me an unreasonable amount of joy. I've already started my autumnal reading, but in October, it gets really good. I've got a few books here that I'm going to chat to you about that I'm going to be reading over the next few weeks. We have scary things and spooky atmospheric things and sweet pumpkin spice things. I'm palpably excited <laughs> thinking about these books. Please let me know if you have any special autumnal reading plans and definitely give me your best seasonal recommendations. First up, we have Jekyll by Erin E. Adams. This is a new horror psychological thriller. It came out earlier this month from Dead Ink Books. It follows a black woman named Liz who returns to her predominantly white Rust Belt hometown in Pennsylvania for her friend's wedding. And when a young black girl goes missing, Liz discovers that this has been happening for many years. Children have been going missing in the woods, all girls and all black. This sounds so good. It got so much acclaim over in the state. I'm really excited that it's publishing over here as well. I expect this is going to be dark and twisty. I think it might have a paranormal edge, but I may have made that up. I love thrillers that dive deep into community secrets. I'm really hoping this one will pack a punch. Really, really excited to read this soon. Also, hats off to Dead Ink Books for this gorgeous cover design. Next up, we have A Sunny Place for Shady People by Mariana Enriquez. This is a new short story collection that came out in September from Granta and it is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. These stories are said to be delicious and nightmarish, detailing achingly ordinary people experiencing terror, the surreal and the supernatural. We have a family whose faces melt away, a hotel haunted by the girl who drowned in the water tank on the roof, a riverbank populated by birds who used to be women. I have never read any Mariana Enriquez before, but she is super acclaimed. One of Latin America's most loved authors, it is about time that I experience her writing for myself. In here, I believe we have ghosts, ghouls, the occult, the macabre. Themes explored include womanhood, LGBTQ counterculture, and Argentina's brutal past. It is said to be lyrical and hypnotic, and it will leave you shaken. This sounds perfect. I'm really hoping that I enjoy her writing. Next up, we have Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice by Katie Cicitelli Cooch or Cook. This it came out last month from Scholastic. It is a cozy autumnal YA romance set in a quaint, charming little village in New England that loves all things autumn. When a multinational coffee chain opens in the village, Lucy's mum's coffee shop, which is usually thriving at this time of year, begins to struggle. And worse, Jack Harper, the new kid at school and Lucy's crush, works there. We all know the vibes here. This is going to be cozy and swoony and sweet. It's got all of the tropes, enemies to lovers, 
grumpy time sunshine. That's all I need to know, to be honest. This is exactly what I want to be reading at this time of the year to break up the unsettling and the spooky. Next up, we have The Fate of Mary Rose by Caroline Blackwood. This is a rediscovered Virago modern classic is being published on the 7th of November. First published in the 1980s, it follows the story of a sleepy Kent village when a young girl is abducted. As the crime unleashes a wave of hysteria, Cressida becomes paranoid and obsessed, determined to save her own daughter from the same fate, and perhaps even from her husband. I love rediscovered classics from the late 20th century. I feel like they're really coming to the forefront of indie publishing at the moment, and I'm a big fan. This is said to be pitch black and compulsive and skin crawling, exploring repressed violence, female rage and maternal obsession. I'm hearing great things about this, it's totally up my street. Next up, we have Modern Gothic, an anthology of short stories. Newly out from Fly on the Wall Press this month, this is a gothic anthology blurring the lines between reality and dreams. It features landlords with sinister requests, ethereal housemates, and a glass-encased jungle built by an eccentric Father. This is said to be for fans of eerie, atmospheric, quintessentially gothic tales, which couldn't be more perfect for this time of year. Now the weather is getting colder, I am so in the mood for this. I've actually also dipped into one of the stories already, and they are delicious. I have a feeling I'm going to read this one very quickly. And finally, ending on a super exciting adventure middle grade release, we have Thunder City by Philip Reeve. This came out last month from Scholastic, set in the same world as the acclaimed Mortal Engines series. This one follows Tamsin, who since she was young has been fighting in the amusement arcade against Revenants dead brains nestled in armoured bodies. Meanwhile, the wheeled city of Metropolis has been taken over by a rebel faction, and an unlikely crew of fighters must try and take it back. So I read the Mortal Engine series a long time ago, like lower secondary school, but I remember really, really enjoying it. The world building was so rich and exciting. I loved following the characters. So it'll be really interesting to dive back into this world and see what I make of it. I really enjoy reading fantasy and dystopian novels for younger readers at this time of the year. Also, this cover is giving autumn. So there we go guys, those were a bunch of books that I'm going to be reading this autumn. I'm also definitely going to be searching through my library audiobook app for anything that is seasonally appealing. Please let me know if any of these books sound up your street. Please tell me what you're going to be reading over the next few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. I know I say it every time, but I really do appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you all very soon in a new video. Bye guys.